All right, hey there, Touch Designer Programmers, Matthew here. So, let's look at some exciting things uh, that help us transition from lists in this kind of like abstract, blah, blah, kind of goofy, Python-y space into Touch Designer land. And specifically what we're going to look at is we're going to look at some chops. I'm going to go ahead and grab a noise chop, not a nose chop, but a noise chop. And I'm going to change this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this to samples and make just 10 samples of randomness. Just so we've got a kind of simpler way to kind of think about this. We've got less things to kind of worry about. So let's go ahead and we're going to add a text dat here. And we're going to edit the contents of this puppy. And we're going to do a whole bunch of stuff. So first up, uh, first things first, we need to define a variable. A variable. So noise one is going to be the operator. That's noise one. That makes sense so far. Now uh, we can do a bunch of things, right? So we can print out noise one. Great. Mm, all right, that's. Uh, Whatever. Uh, we could also print out noise one, chan one, right? And this is only going to give us one number. It gives us the first sample in here. Okay, that's that's interesting. Now we before we looked at the uh, the channel class. So what if we did this, noise one, chan zero. Okay. Well, that's the same thing. I don't, I still don't understand what the big deal is. And that's because the real magic comes here. Real magic is in, uh, if we look at chan zero, and if we ask for all the vowels. We want all the values inside of this thing. Now, all of a sudden, it looks an awful lot like we have a list. Right? We've got our square brackets, we've got commas. This is a good old fashioned list. So the information that we can actually grab from this operator, right, is formatted as a list, which means, okay, right? we might be able to do something like noise one, chan one, and specify an index. And I'm just gonna go ahead and comment these things out so we don't clutter up ourselves too much. Okay, well, what does that mean? Okay, that's the first sample. Ah, okay. Well then, what about So we've got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh my god, it keeps going and going. Eleven. Why did I pick eleven? Well, over here we'll remember that we started at zero and we went to ten. So we've got eleven samples in here. Right? And actually, I did that wrong. We should only go to the number 10. Right? Because we go 0, go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. So if we were to print these out, we would see all of the samples individually. Because this is a list. Or we can think of this as being a list of numbers. It's not a proper list, but the way that we think about it in Python is that we have access to it as though it were a list. And that is pretty darn amazing. That means that we could also do something like this. Noise one. Oops. Chan one. And we could ask for the length of this thing. Right? We could say, okay, well, how many samples is that? It's 11. Well, it turns out 
that there is in fact something that we can already do that gives us the same thing, right? There happens to be, and if we looked at the Python help for this, we'd see that if it ever loads, <laughs> there we go, that there is in fact a, a member called numSamples. Okay. What, that, what, okay, that's exciting, that's exciting. So we can say noise one num samples. We can get the number of samples and we should see that it's the same, 11, 11. So we don't have to worry about the length of the thing. We can just say, hey, how many samples are in that? Now, if we look at this, we can also see there's a thing called numchans, start, end, rate, right? We've got all sorts of really swanky stuff that we can get access to here. And that's pretty phenomenal. And what's great is that it doesn't end there. In fact, the fun never stops. Because other things that are a list are things like our points. So let's edit the contents of this. Right, so we're gonna define, whoa, hey there, cat block city. So rect one is the operator Rectangle, rectangle one. Okay. So we could do something like print out rect one's points. Okay, what, what do we got? Ah, oh, it's an object. And you might say, Matt, how'd you come up with points? And I would say, guess what? It's that little magic Python button that we love so much. It happens to tell us that there are, there's a member called points. All right, so this is a set of points. Okay, well, uh, I want to know more. Well, all right, let's, let's do this then. Let's see, right, because we can just try things. Let's see if we can just make that thing into a list. Rect1 points. Doesn't hurt to try. So let's see what happens. <gasps> we can. Which would lead me to believe, right? It would lead me to suspect that if we did something like print out rect1 points at an index of zero, then we might actually be able to get out <gasps> this thing. So we get a tuple, right? We get two values, we get this index, and then we also get a set of three points. There is a tremendous amount of information that's stored as lists, or we access as lists here in, in Touch Designer. And in fact, it's one of the most important and kind of uh, powerful things that we can begin to think about is how we have, uh, how we can use lists in a way to help us really explore and dig around in things. All right, one last thing. We're going to make a container. I'm going to do this real fast, so pardon me. I'm going to make a container here, and in this container, I'm going to go ahead and put in three buttons. And these three buttons, I'm going to choose our line order, um, digits, great, it's wonderful, and then we're just going to align them left to right. And... This should be 150 by 50. Great, we've got our three buttons, and while we're in here, let's just go ahead and make them all radio buttons. Brilliant. Okay, why, why all the fuss here? Well, there's uh, something special, right? There's that magic button again. It's my favorite button in the whole wide world, right? And if we look through here, right, we might look for something called find uh, children. Okay, this is really exciting. What is Find Children? It returns a list of operators that match our criteria. Okay, well, what does that mean? So let's, let's go ahead and, and dig a little bit deeper. We could say uh, that our uh, container one is equal to our operator container one, and we want to print out Uh, our fine children, right? 
Okay, well, what what's gonna happen? Ooh, I can't wait. The suspense is killing me. Holy macaroni. This is a big, long list of a ton of different things. Right, and if I look at this, all right, project one, container one, great. So the button one, well, there's an expression chop. So I'm actually getting everything that's inside of all of these things. Maybe I don't want that. Okay, that's all right. I don't have to want that because I happen to be able to give this a whole set of instructions, right? We saw here that we can specify type, name, path, depth, okay? So maybe what I wanna do is I wanna say, guess what? Type should be button comp. And depth should only equal one. Okay, well then what do I get if I do that? Now I get a list, well, let's see, let's clear this and run that one more time. Okay, now I get just three things, right? So I get my button comp, my button comp, right? I can see button one, button two, button three, right? So now all of a sudden I am getting a whole lot of, um, more kind of granularity. And in fact, I could even, because that's a list, remember it's a list and it's awesome. We could look at just something in the first position of that list, which means we'd get just button one. Okay, well, what else could I get? That means that I could take this, right? Remember this returning an operator. So maybe I, I wanna have the name of that thing, or maybe I want the digits from that thing, right? And I get those. And last but not least, if I want to be really crazy kooky, I could do something like click, right? Because click allows us to spoof uh, behaviors. And what we should see here now is we should see this button turn on, and it did. Right, so now all of a sudden we've, uh, we've got a way to actually activate panel components as well as finding out what they are and doing all manner of things with them. That's like a big crazy like a uh, ramshackle way of looking at a bunch of different things, right? That's like should be super overwhelming and that's all right. Because the idea, again, I keep saying this, I know, is that uh, the big lesson here is to see that these things are made of lists, that lists are kind of an embedded data structure. Uh, in Python and uh, an embedded data structure that we use again and again and again here in touch. And the more that we can begin to understand uh, how objects are stored in lists and how to retrieve them, extract them from lists, then all of a sudden we have the ability to do some really interesting scripting kinds of things. So it's important that we just kind of understand that conceptually. As we start to look at other data types like dictionaries, uh, this will get even more fun. And once we start to look at loops and how we can run for loops with lists and with other things, then we really start, in, start to get into the magic of what scripting can do for us here in Touch. So I hope that inspires you. Hold on to some of those ideas because we're going to have a ton of fun. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you learned a little bit, and we'll talk some more soon.